Welcome to the, uh, the uh, seminar series in, um, that is arranged by the uh, Area of the Dance production. I'm uh, Johan Mangqvist, I'm the uh, Vice Director of the Area of Advance. And uh, today we have the pleasure of in welcoming Ida Gremir, who is a professor in, in quality management. And she's going to discuss uh, sustainability, challenges, digitalization, and servitization in this context. So uh, very welcome, Ida, and uh, please uh, start when you when you think you're ready. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Johan. Uh, so uh, my name is, as Johan said, Ida Gremer, and I'm a professor in quality management and also a director of the master's program in quality and operations management. So as uh, evident from the title, my title as well as the title of the talk, uh, it will be uh, a management take uh, today on, on the seminar. And uh, much of my research focuses uh, on the professionals that work within quality management, the competences they need, the tools and practices they use. Uh, so I will try to give you some insights into the research that I'm involved with, together with colleagues here at my division and also at uh, other predominantly Swedish uh, divisions uh, in Linköping and Karlstad and Luleå uh, that I work together with. So I will give you some glimpses of different things. Uh, in three different themes. So I will uh, pause after each one to see if you have any questions. Uh, okay, so the agenda for today then is uh, to discuss some of the challenges that this uh, profession or the practitioners in this field face. Uh, and they will be divided into three areas. This is an area where sustainability and the responsibility for these questions in both in, within product development and production, sometimes falls on, on the, uh, the professionals within quality management. Uh, digitalization influences this a lot. This uh, area has a tradition based on mathematical statistics and a lot of analytics, which of course is changing heavily uh, as more and more firms digitalize. Another area influencing it is servitization, where uh, production firms offers a combined bundle of, of products and services. Uh, so I will take us through this, uh, and it says questions in the end, but I will also ask for some questions if there are any uh, after each of the sections. Uh, but before that, I am uh, humble enough to realize that not everyone thinks so much about quality management as I do. Uh, so I will start by showing what I view this area to be and how I define it. And uh, the definitions that I work with, and I have some commercial for my book as well, uh, is from Dean and Bowen, which is an old paper, but quite recognized in this area to be the one with the best definition of what quality and, and quality management is. So it has three main principles, and I will give you the shortcut for them instead of you having to read the tiny sentences there. Uh, so the three main principles are customer focus, or customer stakeholder focus in more modern takes, uh, continuous improvement, the idea that there's always a way to improve and provide a better solution uh, with, without increasing the costs spent. And then teamwork, which in my perspective is an often neglected principle of quality management, uh, but very important. Uh, and most of the principles and practices have elements of this. So what you see on the rows is that when we work with this concept, we depart from these principles, customer focus, continuous improvement, and teamwork and break them down or operationalize them into practices. What happens in the firms? What is it that they do? And even specific methods and tools, which within the area of advanced production is, is the research area of many other researchers. Some of you are listening here. So even if you're not within quality management, these tools, of course, are, are the topics and, and are important even in other areas. So this is a quite established area. Uh, my the former professor in this area was still, but Emeritus, Bo Bergman was one of the ones working with this early in Sweden in the 90s when it was quite new and hyped for a while. And now I would say that most organizations have established quality departments. They have, we have educations, uh, one of them, the one that I'm responsible for. Uh, we have a lot of alumni working dedicated to this area. So it's an established area, but it is challenged. It's changing as as many other areas, there's a lot of changes and big trends uh, yeah. that influences how yeah. we work in this area. And uh, as I said before, and as is in the title, I will focus on three different things that have a, 
uh, provided uh, new opportunities as well as uh, challenges uh, for this profession. And the first one is uh, linked to sustainability, that this well-established organization has for long worked with defined internal processes, uh, continuous improvement, uh, it's, it's about fact-based decisions, it's about process orientation, it's about customer focus and fulfilling and exceeding the needs of the customer. But what happens now, if we focus on, on these professionals that work with them, very many of them get a combined responsibility for quality and sustainability uh, and redefines the focus uh, from the customer as the buyer to the customer as anyone influenced by the product. And that, of course, demands a completely new skill set. So from being clear and, and in a, often in a management system and well-defined, it's now more, what should I say, vision-based or target-based that we should contribute to a larger, better picture. And this, of course, uh, for the ones that I study, uh, I, I teach them before they graduate, and then I continue studying my alumni when they go out to work. From having a very clear role in an organization, uh, they have a wide responsibility, which on an individual level can be perceived as really fun, but also extremely challenging. Because the tools, if you work with design of experiments, or you work with quality function deployment, or you're an auditor of the quality management system, and all of a sudden sustainability is highest on your agenda, of course, there's also a need for competence development and a new support for these individuals. So that's one trend that we see the challenges. And I will come back to the research we do uh, related to this in my, uh, the second part of the talk. So from being focused and quite clear to a situation which demands a broad skill set and new challenges. Another area that we have studied a lot is the one that distinguishes between exploitation and exploration. Uh, we see, and I'm, I think it's unfortunate uh, that a lot of the work done within quality management and quality technology is focused on, on what we have today and to improve that. We improve the, the bricks on the top, we standardize and, and try to do that as well as possible. But we have an organization that has become further away from the customer. So it's more difficult to understand and see the new opportunities for more radical improvements or innovations. So there's a need to go from this exploitation to more explorative role. That is much due to digitalization. And I will come back to one publication and study that I've done uh, together with my lean shopping colleagues about this. Uh, this also means that from being a department that is quite, quite well defined, uh, now going back to the principle of teamwork, you work within the quality department, there's quality managers, there's quality engineers, and there's this infrastructure throughout the organization of people with a dedicated responsibility for this to ending up in a situation where we need much more closer interaction with the IT department, uh, with the sales and marketing that are closer to the customers. So there's another landscape, not only externally, but also internally on how this profession needs uh, to work. Another area that changes a lot is that uh, naturally a quality department get a lot of customer feedback, claims, warranty errands and so forth. Uh, if we take the automotive, industry as an example, uh, very often done through dealers. So there's another organization in between. The claims that reaches the quality department are very standardized according to, to formal claim system. Whereas with connected products, the end customers bypass sometimes the dealers and directly have contact with customer services and support in the providing firm. So the channels that goes back and forth between customer and the firm uh, for example, with feedback and, and claims, has changed, which naturally challenges then how can a quality department responsible for responding to these claims even get access to the information that they need. So that's the other area, from being a bit more narrow and internally focused to expanding and being more explorative and externally focused, which has to do with digitalization. Uh, so we have covered sustainability and digitalization. And the third area that I said in the beginning, is what happens when we then uh, change our offering to the market. When we go from having a product that we, we view as a valuable per se, we deliver the value in a hands-on product to actually co-produce with customers services that supports their use process. 
and and who they are. And uh, I work also not only with production companies, but also with uh, some healthcare projects together with Center for Healthcare Improvement and my colleagues there. And uh, there it is even a service organization like healthcare also changes in servitization to go from a situation where the patient is a passive receiver of care and value then to actually seeing the patient as a partner, someone that is the one creating value. And my task is to support that value creation. So that's in a service context. In a, in a manufacturing context, this is often also connected to, to possibilities given by digitalization. So it's not only challenges, but also possibilities that instead of providing one uh, object that in itself carries value, we are not now connected and delivers value, not maybe in terms of a washing mas machine, but in terms of a simpler life or a improved work-life balance or whatever, <laughs> the balance in, in your free time, less, less laundry time and more time for other things might be the value that we should deliver. And finally, I've also uh, done some work with the company involved in making hearing aids. And that also then goes from producing the hearing aid as good as possible and high quality as possible. We worked with robust design methods and, and so forth at this company, but now to also actually deliver entertainment. Maybe that's what someone wants that has a hearing aid or you want a life where uh, the hearing aid is not seen because you don't want to expose uh, that you have one, uh, which is not having to do with the functionality of the product, but with the actual value uh, for the one using the product. So these are the three uh, challenges that, or as not all elements of it, of course, but an expose of some challenges that drives uh, developments in this area. So this uh, area then, in my view, has the potential to contribute in a better way to a broader goal, not only the durability, reliability of, of, of the products, or not even only to meet end buyers' needs, but to contribute also to exploring opportunities with digitalization, servitization, and contribute to sustainable development. But this demands then that there are new, new knowledge and competences, uh, new ways of collaborate within and external to the firm to become more explorative, uh, and of course, that does not mean that I say that we should throw out all the well-established and useful tools that we have, but align them in another way or adapt them. And in summary then, as I said already, this entails a quite different focus from what is, is the case today. So if we now take them, these areas one by one, uh, I will start with uh, some, some findings, but also some uh, displaying some of the research that we do. And of course, as you know, I might say, happen to say I, but we are more people and you will see it on, on the publication. So it's, it's a group effort in almost all cases. So quality management has long been stated to be, oh, this is one of, of the areas where we could get sustainability integrated into daily practices. Uh, and we wanted uh, some years ago to, and this was then funded by the area of advanced, uh, uh, PhD students that worked there here in the beginning of the area of advanced time. And we did a literature review about quality management and its stated potential in contributing to sustainable development and how that actually then looked. What was it that actually uh, could be a contribution? Was it true? Uh, did we have some areas where this contribution had been outlined or described? And in what way would we then uh, be able to contribute. So we did a systematic review and we tried to live as we learned. So we had researchers not only from quality management, but also from the environmental management area. Some researchers from Luleå, uh, University of Technology that worked together with us. This one, uh, I will come back to that later. I'm now replicating with a student, uh, a master student uh, to see if we now can see uh, more uh, measurable results, because at this time it was quite abstract and not so much measurements that could show the hands-on impact on sustainability. So that's what I'm, I'm currently involved in doing. But there were four areas uh, where we could see uh, that sustainability and quality management was described as this perfect or near to perfect match or a way of, of getting sustainable development implemented in daily practices. 
Uh, one, of course, in the management systems. Uh, you have several. Uh, they demand resources. Uh, and to integrate them is one way of, of getting uh, more, more out of, of your spent resources. Uh, similarly, there are separate environmental management systems. And implementing them, designing them, of course, you can learn from the quality management system that has been around for a very long time and more than, I don't remember the current number, but uh, more than 1 million organizations are certified according to the ISO 9001, which is the quality management, the most common certified quality management system. But then also we are more hands-on and this is a quality function deployment house. Uh, it, we also saw studies of design of experiments or uh, robust design methodologies. Uh, which is an area that we are more on more departments studying within the area of advanced production, where you have tried to make adaptations to better support sustainability. And lastly, uh, quality management has a long tradition of being very customer focused and realizing that customers have different roles, as you see in this model from a seminal paper by Lengnick and Hall. Customer can be the buyer, it can be the actual outcome of the process. It can be the user, a co-producer, or a resource. And using these quite broad concepts of what, who the customer is, we can, of course, also see environment as, as a customer and integrate in these tools and methods environmental requirements. And then there are some examples uh, of publications and studies where you can also see some of my collaborators. And within the area three, there's also an international collaboration with National University of Singapore uh, that we had uh, a while ago. Just to give you a more hands-on on example of this, uh, this is, I know, a very unpedagogical picture. So I will walk you through it. And my intention is not for you to read details. But if we start from the top left, there's a P diagram, a common, simple way of illustrating what it is that we do with, within robust design methodology. We have a product. Uh, we design it according to all our knowledge with control factors that we can steer. That is like type of material, type of dimensions, and so forth. We have an intended outcome. Uh, but there are noise factors that influence this, and that's the table in the middle. D different types of things that if I produce a fridge and put it in Gothenburg, it's in a quite stable environment with about 20 degrees year round. If I put it in Khartoum, it's a place where I have seen fridges, and it's a very different environment. Khartoum is the capital of Sudan. It's in the Sahara Desert. Sandstorms send pieces, or what would we say, sand, yeah, sand particles everywhere, uh, not regulated temperatures, but we still want it to behave as we have intended. So there's a variation in the environment. There's a whole research area about this, uh, about robust design and how to then achieve robust design, which means creating a product that is stable despite these noise factors. And what this chart in front of you displays is that when we did this study, if we look here down to the right, we also took different stages in the life cycle. So manufacturing, uh, raw material distribution, use and end of, of life and recycling, uh, hopefully then. And we tried to expand these methods by not looking solely on the use phase, but applying a life cycle perspective. So these are examples of what we do with these established practices and tools to, to in a more explicit and uh, evident way, get the sustainability dimensions in. So we add the life cycle perspective to these tools. So that's the first area of sustainability. Uh, and I realize now that maybe I should wait for the questions to the end since uh, Kalina wanted to record the first part of, of the seminar. So the second area then is digitalization. And this, I think I, I can go through in one way quite briefly because we all are in areas that are influenced and affected by either digitalization, which in my world means more disruptive new ways of working or digitization, where we digitalize the processes that we already do without changing them so much. And this is uh, an area where we have studied, uh, done some studies together, uh, some PhD students, uh, researchers in lean shopping, both within quality management and and within the IT area. To actually then, what you see in the picture is to have a focus on value created in the provider. Now I'm in the center of the picture. Uh, the provider here, uh, that's 
the providing firm that can facilitate value and create prerequisites for the customer value process. There is interaction between the, the provider and the customer. So that's a joint sphere in, in this model. That's what we call a joint sphere, where value can be co-created with both parties. And there's the customer sphere, where actually value is created in the use processes. Having this perspective of not producing one product that delivers value in itself, but the product being a facilitator of value, means that the quality management function that should be, according to the three principles that I hope you will remember forever after this talk, customer focus, continuous improvement, and teamwork. Working with customer focus and being capable of identifying improvement opportunities means that this function needs to, to have presence or have so-called triggers, data that comes in from all these different spheres to be able to facilitate value to as large extent as possible. On the other axis, uh, the vertical one, we have studied if these professionals work with explorative practices, that is identifying new things that we're not already doing, and that is made possible uh, because of, of digitalization. And then exploitation, doing things in a better way, uh, digitize, in other words, not changing, but made moving into a digital environment. And we had a, a project of several, what was three years uh, with the three large manufacturing companies and one public organization, studying what this actually means for the professionals. So the, the goal of the project was to identify competence needs. And uh, we created a competence model that can be used when recruiting quality uh, professionals in different roles. And then you can diversify in this specific role, what competence do you need to, to be capable of actually realizing the poss possibilities and potentials within uh, digitalization. And then we used uh, an already published by another research group model where we see different levels of digitalization. Does it happen in the process level? So it's what we already do, our internal processes. Is it in on an organizational level that it changes how we look or is it even in the ecosystem? And then examples of the initiatives that we studied and saw in these firms. In this short time, it becomes quite abstract. I'm sorry about that, but we have some examples of things that they, they did. So in this context, then we tried to map the value creating process and also exploration, exploitation, and see, do the practitioners feel equipped to contribute with this? Or are there challenges where we as a university, as researchers could contribute with more competence, development or support? So it ended up in, in four different endpoints, so to say, are they exploring new digital solutions on the top or exploiting available digital solutions? And then on the other axis, is it focused on creating customer value or is it focused on internal efficiency? And then the profession becomes different uh, and has different thoughts here. What we could see generally uh, is that it's extremely heavy on the left-hand side. So we, we have had a situation for a year, some years where we have been disappointed. <laughs> Sometimes you're disappointed of your research results. We have been a bit disappointed of seeing when we work with the alumni and and also people uh, educated at other places, that there's a high internal focus. So it's much focus on exploitation, focusing on the providers where, what do we do internally? And that's where quality function is mainly working. Whereas due to digitalization and certification, we see a need to move both to the right and to the top. So becoming or finding channels that ties us closer to the external customer and then makes it possible to be more explorative. And uh, one study that we did together with uh, Andrea, which was a former PhD student, and Arnie, who's also within the area of advanced production, was to look at customer initiated feedback and how that then expands the scope of what the quality function is doing. So we actually, what we basically did was to follow feedback from customers when it was feedback on products and when it was feedbacks on products and services. So there were different maps from this company where you see to the left hand side that there's a very structured process from the customer and all the way up here to the quality control function which is called in this case whereas when we move into providing services there is no connection up to the quality function so the problems 
from which improvements projects could be initiated or even innovations could happen does not ever reach the quality function. It reaches other places, of course, that might also have a responsibility for, for innovation, for example. But the ones that are supposed and equipped to lead improvement initiatives get a bit isolated from this type of feedback. So the entering of feedback is different uh, and also how you use it and feed it into improvements. And finally, how you can then turn this customer feedback into organizational knowledge, because by getting stuck in the help desk, it, we saw that the knowledge about the customer got like internalized in one individual and not then through the quality organization spread uh, and used uh, on other offerings made to the customer. And now bear with me, I am uh, at the final of my three areas, uh, which has to do uh, with, we continue with the customer. Customer focus is key uh, in this area. And when uh, a company transitions from offering products to services, a lot of things change. Uh, and I would say it's not that the requirement on quality of the product decreases, it's rather the opposite, that the, the product the quality requirements of the product is very high with the other perspective of that. It's not only delivering a value per se, it needs to be connected to the customer's use processes. We need to know what the customer is doing with this product. So again, we use this model that I've already gone through with you, uh, the value creation model by Grandos, which has a provider swear, a joint swear, and a customer swear. But what we did in this study together with Cardiff University was to map the feedback. So we wanted to understand when feedback from customers enter a firm, how do they then absorb that and change that, realize that, okay, we have feedback, we have a new what's called activation trigger that calls us to understand that we need new knowledge, we need to collect more data, we need to learn something new. And that's the concept of absorptive capacity. So you must have potential that you get the data and then you have to realize it by transforming it and using it use it within your organization. So what we did was then in both the UK and in Sweden, uh, interviewing uh, the quality organization, mapping out what type of feedback they got from, from customers. And the rounded ones, the round circles, their product feedback, and the squared ones are feedback on services. And what we could see, and this is just a selection of them. So if one aggregates through the entire study, it was very evident that in, on a total level, the quality organization got feedback from direct interaction and from in, internally. Uh, some, but few, from actually customer use. And this is despite the fact that what we all talk about, sensors, connection, we always have feedback from customers, but it doesn't, it's, it's not used, so it's a potential feedback or absorptive capacity, but it's not realized. And when it comes to services compared to products, this balance is even more tilted towards the left, with a lot of focus on the provider swear and, and the loan swear, which limits then the possibilities for quality improvements, evidently, because we don't even get the feedback, we don't realize that, okay, we need new data, new competence, new knowledge in order to improve. Uh, and how we do this then uh, in practice is that we have different types of, and this is again, yes, hopefully to create some interest and then you can contact me or look at things that we have done. One way of doing this, that, and I will show an example from, from a healthcare setting, is to use a method called experience-based co-design that I did together with a former PhD student that's now quality director at a, at a hospital where we actually try to create these meeting points. We could try to create, uh, expand the joint sphere. So try to get more touch points with customers. And what you do in this method is that you have customers or patients in this case, and you have uh, staff and you interview both of them to understand the process of anything, the process of delivering value in some way. They have separate interviews where they give their impact on what worked, what did not work and so forth. Uh, they make uh, charts, uh, like process charts more or less. Uh, with what happened. Uh, they have focus groups still within these two customer provider before they meet together and share their charts. And it's a shock when you see it, how few critical elements that are common. It's like a handful out of 30, I think it was in, in one of the projects. So then you get 
in a real life meeting with your customer, you get to know where the improvement needs are. And what's specific with this method is that you then, after where it says focus group with parents and staff here, you continue to do the improvement work together. So it's not that the customers are then off the hook, just leaving information passively, but actually are involved in, in the improvement work that is done. So this is one way of, of uh, getting it operationalized how to actually co-create with the customer. Other things that we have done is, uh, for example, a very simple uh, eight, eight three process where you uh, try to capture uh, customer-driven service innovations in a manufacturing firm, where a salesperson meets a customer, solves a problem, and then replicate that solution to other customers, which means a new service has, has been innovated. Uh, but it's very difficult, or was in this, this is a global big manufacturing company, was difficult for them to capture these ideas and sell them to more customers. So then we uh, constructed, which I will not go through the details, but we constructed a very easy model, more or less one piece of paper, some information that were filled in and then passed on to steering group to decide which services to develop. So I know I, I'm on a quite abstract level today, but there are, we try to live as we, preach from this principles, practice, and tools to operationalize into concrete results used in firms. So in summary then, uh, I have uh, gone through some, some themes that I hope will uh, highlight that I don't think that these principles are invalid or out of fashion, but, it's not, uh, but uh, rather can be more valid and contribute to a broader goal. Uh, However, it demands that we are adapting uh, and changing some of the practices and tools that we use. For example, we have to understand more of the customer's use process. Uh, we have to have a stakeholder view. It's not only the buyers, we can contribute to society and, and the environment. It can also be a customer in, in these models then to get them integrated. Uh, but it also requires that the profession and the competences uh, support a more explorative approach, a more external view, view than, than focusing mainly on internal processes. And just one final one with what we are currently doing uh, in different constellations of, of people. We replicate this the quality management and sustainability study. Uh, now with a specific focus since it's been some years and the area is more established to try to uh, capture measurable results. Uh, looking at empirical studies and see how they capture these synergies in, in some kind of measurement. Uh, we are also working with audits and uh, the audits of the quality management system and try to continue publishing on one of my previous PhD students work about how to actually increase the value of, of these activities that are already done. We uh, continue working with Cardiff on this study about how to activate uh, the quality management function, how to create ways of, uh, of getting data from the customer use process. What is referred to within this, to use that theoretical lens of absorptive capacity as activation triggers. And then finally, uh, there are uh, new types of data reaching this organization. And what I'm starting to do now uh, within the area of Adorn's uh, production uh, is to, uh, I have a lot of alumni, a lot of people that I know that work in quality management within production, and with a focus on them, mapping what type of data they get uh, as input for the improvement work. Uh, so the supplier, who supplies data, uh, input to them, how do they process this data and work with it? And what's the customers of their improvement work? Who is it they deliver their analysis to and their uh, advice on, on improvement projects. So that's something that I will be starting up uh, soon, or have started with one, one firm so far. And that concludes the talk with the three, I like three, as you know, three principles, customer focus, continuous improvement, and teamwork, and three different areas that uh, are influencing this study object of mine, uh, sustainability challenges, digitalization, and servitization. Thank you.